The Hollywood game can take a lot out of an individual. It's not easy being judged and criticized by millions, treated like you're a business and not a human being, having half truth spread around about you on the internet. Dave Chappelle quit Hollywood back in 2005 when he fled to South Africa after walking off the set of his successful Comedy Central series. Monique took a stand in 2010 after refusing to promote the film Precious overseas without payment. Monique has not gone back on her word and has continued to stand up against the Hollywood machine and its practices for what has been over a decade. Cat Williams is yet another prolific comedian who has lost out on film and TV opportunities for not playing the Hollywood game. When artists turn their back on Hollywood, it makes sense for them to look elsewhere for their creative output. Sometimes that output comes in the form of activism. The artist formerly known as Most Def now goes by the name of Yasin Bey. Bey has a similar story to Hollywood peers like Dave Chappelle and Cat Williams, someone who stayed true to themselves never lost sight of who they were and sacrificed a career because of it. Here's why most deaf disappeared. In 2011, when Yasin Bey was asked why he changed his stage name from most deaf, a name we had known him as over for 17 years in hip hop, his answer was, I began to fear that most deaf was being treated as a product, not a person. So I've been going by Yasin since 1999. At first it was just for friends and family, but now I'm declaring it openly. Bay felt the need to move and escape the United States. He briefly lived in Central America, other parts of North America and Europe, before eventually settling in Cape Town, South Africa. For a guy like me who had five or six generations, not just in America, but in one town in America to leave America, things gotta be not so good with America. Back in 2014, Bay had already been experiencing trouble leaving the country. He was forced to cancel a US tour because of immigration issues. Bay had come to the conclusion that there were political reasons as to why he was being treated this way. Bay went on to describe the state of South Africa and says it has become a hindrance to his personal life and work obligations. He described how state officials asked questions about him and his family having no legal right to do so. In January 2016, it was announced that Yasin Bey had been arrested in South Africa for attempting to use a world passport. Bey had been living in South Africa since 2013. When he tried to leave, the Department of Home Affairs considered his world passport an unofficial document. They stated that the country doesn't recognize world passports and claimed that the rapper entered the country without a valid U.S. passport. According to the Daily Beast, Bay allegedly stayed past his allowed date on a visitor's permit and had two weeks to leave the country. After news broke, Bay's rep made a statement. From what I've read, their allegations are wrong. He attempted to leave the country for a professional commitment and was denied the ability to board an airplane after providing his world passport. Bay's rep was asked if the family had stayed past their visa term, which they confirmed. They may have stayed past their visa term, however, his arrest is because of the claim that he was allegedly using a false and fraudulent document. According to the officials of South Africa Home Affairs, Bay and his family were given 14 days to leave the country. In a message, Bay said, This is Yasin Bay. At this present time, I'm currently in Cape Town, South Africa. I'm being prevented from leaving unjustly, unlawfully, and without any logical reason. They're saying that they want to deport my family. They're making false claims against me, saying that my travel document that I was traveling with is fictitious. It's not. Anyone can do the research on a world passport. It's not a fictitious document. It's not designed to deceive or rob any benefit from the state. In fact, the world passport has been accepted here on numerous occasions. I am not a liar. I've made no false claims. I have not misrepresented myself. I'm under unnecessary state supervision and scrutiny. In the same mission, Bay announced his retirement via audio message on Kanye West's official website. I'm retiring from the music recording industry as it is currently assembled today, and also from Hollywood, effective immediately. I'm releasing my final album this year, and that's that. Lead to all, fear of none. Bay's freestyle was called No More Parties in South Africa, similar to West's own No More Parties in LA, released shortly before. Why are these police up in my face? Why are they raid in my place? Why I don't feel safe? This is not an expression of fear. This is just to make things clear. My intentions are pure in coming here. And that's for everything I love to hold dear. Homies in the building, so is my wife and my children. I committed no crime. Why is the state wasting my time? Later that year in October 2016, Bay had to cancel a concert in London due to travel restrictions. Several other European dates were canceled for that same reason. That month, Bay released another message confirming his retirement on Facebook. I'm retiring for real this year, this week, with the 17th anniversary of Black on Both Sides 
being released, I am grateful to have had the career that I have been able to enjoy. The following month, Bay was finally given access to leave South Africa, but not before he was put on South Africa's undesirable persons list. According to the South African Immigration Act, a foreigner may be declared undesirable by the Director General of Home Affairs if he or she has overstayed his or her South African visa. Bay was slated to perform one show in Harlem and three shows in Washington, D.C. He released three singles, Local Time, NAW, and Seaside panic room which were all slated to appear on his final album december 99th smartly scheduled to be released on december the 9th as a title exclusive just a week after he announced his final album news broke of two other albums coming from bay before his final retirement bay announced that he would premiere his new album negus and natural person in addition to as promised during his performance in Harlem. Bay's collaborator on December 99th, Ferrari Shepard, told fans that there was no release date for the albums, but they were complete. In 2017, Bay performed at One Music Fest in what was the final performance of his career. Prior to his performance, he participated in an interview with the Associated Press, where he assured fans that he would continue creating and will return to the public spotlight in the future. I enjoyed it today, so if I get a chance to do it again in another way, I'll just give it my all. I'm not gonna disappear if I stop rap or doing it in a certain way. Bay's farewell tour was supposed to wrap up at the Kennedy Center at the Performing Arts in Washington, DC, but he was convinced by One Music Fest founder, Jason Carter, to perform in Atlanta. Regarding Bay Finals performance, Carter said, it still hasn't sunken in yet. Just watching him on stage, his excitement and energy, it just looks like he would miss it this entirely too much. If it's his final show, it was monumental. I would not be disappointed if it wasn't just for who he is. In February 2018, Bay announced a new Black Star album that was scheduled to be released that same year. However, no release date was made public. In recent years, Bay has appeared on the Kids See Ghost album from Kanye West and Kid Cudi, as well as with Black Thought on the album Bandana from Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib. In 2019, Bay debuted his highly anticipated follow-up, Negus, at a listening session in Hong Kong. According to a press release, the album was recorded in London in 2015, and it will continue to unfold as a series of varied installations around the world. Unfortunately, the album will not be released digitally or physically. Now, putting an album out on a streaming service on a record label, per se, doesn't mean that I'm not going to be working as a creative person. There are a lot of other places and spaces to work and express. I'm not hostile against these other means of presentation and distribution. I'm just following the vision I had. It's not a rallying cry or anything like that. During the 2020 pandemic, Bay was often seen in Yellow Springs, Ohio, home of Dave Chappelle, whom Bay calls one of his best friends. Now, their friendship has been captured on camera throughout the years, even going as far back as most deaf guest starring on several episodes of Chappelle's show, as well as being a part of Dave Chappelle's block party. In 2021, the two got together with Talib Kweli to form the Midnight Miracle podcast, which were mostly recorded during the pandemic on Chappelle's farm, where he hosted multiple comedy shows. The lifelong friendship between Dave Chappelle and Yasin is evident by Bay's presence on the podcast, as the two seem to have way more in common than a love for hip hop. Both seem to retire at some point in their careers and fled to South Africa to escape the industry. In late 2016, Chappelle made a return to the spotlight after hosting Saturday Night Live, and while Bay did claim he was going to retire, his creativity won't allow him to stop making music and share it with the world. Bay's retirement came out of frustration from certain things he began to see and experience. You don't respect that money if you get it for something you didn't love. That's just the truth of my own experience. I try to have a good time, not just fun, but a really worthwhile time, whatever I'm doing, because it's ultimately about the work. The work is the only reason I have a public profile, so I always try to keep focused there. Bay was interviewed at the top of 2020 to promote Negus and its accompanying art exhibit. It's been 10 years since my last album, but I've been active in that time. I never felt a lack of inspiration. I do like to take my time, but time is relative when people expect it, and when it's the right time are two very different things. Even if some people are banging on the table asking for more bread, it'll be fine. I'm just back in the kitchen cooking up new flavors. Bay has stated that his next project with Blackstar is 95% done and promises a follow-up soon. Although Bay knows he's been saying that for a while, cooking up new flavors is all part of the process, showing that Yasin Bay will never stop creating.